Good. Hi, I'm Rebecca, and um, I'm really excited today to be able to talk to you about Deborah, a woman of action, who I would call uh, Deborah, a woman of God. Um, so let's get started. So we're starting with who is Deborah, and this picture is a picture that Dave Hilditch made, and it's called Deborah and Her Palm Tree. So this story is all about this judge whose name is Deborah, and she's married, and she's a judge of Israel, which means that people will come up to her in this palm tree where she sits, and they will come up to her and ask for her judgment. And it's not like one person a day. It's not like 10 people a day. It's like lines and queues of people that want to come to this woman, Deborah, to receive her judgment that she gets from God. So I don't know if any husbands here are scared of their wives, but you can kind of bet that Lapidoth was terrified of his wife or if any kids that are a little bit scared of their mom sometimes or their dads you can bet that if Deborah had children they would be like really quite worried <laughs> and um, so Deborah has quite an extraordinary life for that time of event for that time because she's a woman and she's a judge and she's a wife and she has quite a lot of things but this is her like normal day-to-day -day life, which I can't, I can't claim I'm a judge of Israel or I have a complicated normal life, but this is her normal. So whatever your normal is, if it's, I don't know, going to work every day or going to speak in parliament because we have a whole bunch of really high-level people in here, whatever your normal is, you have to imagine that's what Deborah's normal is. This is her comfort, which seems very far out for me. And this story is also about Barak. Now, I didn't find any pictures of Barak, so I just found pictures of this is Gideon. But it's, it's the same sort of image. He was like an army leader, okay? And he led 10,000 men. So just to help you guys realize, so that's 10. That's 100. This is 1,000. And this is how many Barak led. This is 10,000 men. So Barak is used to standing and being heard and people knowing what to do because he's told them to do it. And he's the one to make the big decisions and he's the one to protect the country. He's like, that's his normal. That's his comfort day-to-day -day life is leading 10,000 men. Again, that's a bit far-fetched for me, but this is what he does. And he is respected by everyone around him because he's the leader and he's the one to choose. And um, in this story, um, Deborah calls Barak. And it's in, so I already said, it's in Judges from 4 to 5. Deborah's going to call Barak, which isn't normal because normally people come to Deborah. But this time, God has told Deborah, please go and get Barak and bring him here. I have something to say to him. So she does, and she calls Barak to him. And she tells him, the Lord, your, the God of Israel, has indeed commanded, go and march to Mount Tabor and take with you te your 10,000 men from the sons of Naphtali and from the sons of Zebulun. I will draw out to you Sisera, the commander of Jabin's army, with his chariots and his many troops to the river Kishon, and I will hand him over to you. So Deborah has this message that she gives, and now Barak has to react. And this is quite clear. God says, go. And I will, let, I will give you a win. Like, this is just all you have to do. But Barak will answer. So Barak said to Deborah, If you will go with me, then I will go. But if you do not go with me, I will not go. So Deborah, a judge, all of a sudden has this army leader say, Hey, if you don't come with me and hold my hand as I'm doing it, then I won't do it. Seem it okay. <laughs> so Deborah says so Deborah is going to go she goes with him and at one point she says to him arise for this is the day on which the Lord has handed Sisera over to you behold the Lord has gone out before you so Barak went down from Mount Tabor with 10,000 men following him so Deborah hasn't just decided randomly on a random moment to be like now please go, go now it's the time but Deborah is listening to God and depending on him and has said, okay, now you need to go and attack with these men. And the result 
is this. And the Lord routed Sisera and all his chariots and all his army with the edge of the sword before Barak. And Sisera got down from his chariot and fled on foot. So God subdued Jabin, the king of Canaan, on that day before the sons of Israel. So never in this passage does it talk about Barak, the amazing warrior, and his 10,000 men by their strength managing to defeat this army. But God said, right at the beginning, I'm going to hand this army to you, please go. And Barak said, I won't go unless Deborah comes. So Deborah comes, and then they go together and they win. And there are a couple of interesting things that I would love to show you guys. Starting with this. So this is what I'm going to call the square of the known. And it's very small because there are not very many things that we know. Okay? And Deborah's known square is when she's under her palm tree, which is a nice place to be, and she's judging Israel, right? And Barak's known square is, well, when he's leading an army and he makes the decisions and he goes and fights whoever he wants to fight. Now, my known square, if I had to put myself into it, would be, I don't know, going to class, leading a scouts group maybe, creating games for kids. That's, that's what I know. What Deborah didn't know was how to lead an army. That's not in her known square. And for me, the thing that has felt not in my known square this week has been creating a preach out of someone that I've never heard of before. But Deborah still goes. And that limit of the square of the things that she knows is apparently something that she can just go past with ease. Like, she's just like, well, you know, I'm going. And, like, then tells a whole army of 10,000 men how to do something that she's never done before. And um, Deborah is really impressive in this way because she trusts God. And if God says go, then she goes. And she doesn't randomly just choose an army and go, well, Jesus said this, so you should just try. Um, and she really, she relies on God. And when I was thinking about this, um, this is the image that came to mind. Here we go. It's the story of uh, Jesus being the vine and where the branches. And it's found in John 15, 1 to 6, if you want to read it properly. But what it talks about is about how God is the vine and he wants us to rely on him as much as branches rely on the vine. Saying that, you know, actually this known and unknown square that you have, God doesn't have that square. There isn't a place where God goes, okay, now I don't know this bit. But God is trying to teach us today, I think, about how that known box doesn't exist for him. And so if we're trying to rely on him and rely on the vine, then this known and unknown or comfort and discomfort or whatever you feel like calling it, it doesn't exist. Because it's not about what I can do. It's about what God can do. And it's about the vine. And when I was thinking about that more, I figured that it was really about relationship with God. Because if I'm walking around trying to do everything in my own strength, if I tried to lead an army of 10,000 men, by the way, now we would definitely lose. Like, <laughs> but if... I'm trying to do things on my own strength. I'm not going to get anywhere. And I lived it throughout this week when I was preparing this preach because I stressed really bad about what I was going to say and how I was going to do it. And I got focused in on me and on what I can do. And I felt really, really stuck. And then I remembered that God is the one that preaches and that God is the one that helps us do our day-to-day -day jobs and that God is the one that has the big picture. So it's not about me, and it's not about what I can do, but it's about God, and it's about, okay, God, how can I rely on you better? And what can I do to be able to get to know you and build my relationship with you? Because it's not about me and my known and unknown squares. And Deborah didn't look at those squares and go, okay, well, I can't lead an army, so you're just going to have to go, but I promise God goes with you. She went... And she took her faith from knowing who God is and from a relationship with him. And um, 
I want to get you guys to be a little bit active during this preach because that's all really nice and like great, but some people don't exactly fit into that story or they're not, they don't exactly find themselves in the situation that Deborah did or they don't exactly find themselves in my story, but God is actually an individual God who wants to come and build relationship with each and every one of us. So I'm going to get you guys to pray and I'll start. Um, and ask God, okay, God, what can I do this week or these coming weeks to build my relationship with you? What can I do? What simple thing do you want me to do every day where I can learn to rely on you more and learn to be more like Deborah and trust? So uh, if you guys want to get out pens or paper or on your phones and write it down, but I think it's really important when God speaks that we note down what he says. So I will pray, and then we can have just a moment of silence where we can just listen to God, and then I will close off again. Yeah, Father God, thank you because you're a God who speaks, and you're a God who speaks to each of us in different ways. And I pray that today, as we've listened to this uh, story about Deborah, that you would come and speak to us personally about what it means to us, Father. Would you come and show us in what simple way we can grow closer to you this week or these months? Father, where would you like to see us more? And if you've gotten something in that time, I would love for you to write it down somewhere. I think um, one of the cool things of this image of the vine is just how deeply God wants us to rely on him. Because, I mean, okay, Deborah had to rely on God when she was leading 10,000 men. But how detailed in our lives does God want to be? Does he want to be with us when we're choosing what cereal to buy in the supermarket? Or when... We're just like, I don't know, in the bathroom putting our makeup on for us women or like shaving. Because God wants so much more relationship and wants to know us so much more. And I w as I was thinking of how to end this or what God would want to say to us, um, this verse in Isaiah 10, uh, Isaiah 41, 10 came up. So God is speaking and he says, I have chosen you and have not rejected you. So do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. I think sometimes we try and do things on our own or we forget that we can rely on God. And he might only be here on a Sunday, or maybe we're a bit better so he's only there just in the morning when we read our Bible, or just as we pray for our food. But I think God is constantly calling us closer into relationship with him. And he's constantly saying, hey, I chose you, and I chose you, and I'm not going to leave you. 
but why don't you come and get to know me more? Because I have more things to say and more ways that I want to show you how much I love you and more ways in which you can grow. So the message from God today is, I think, will you come and find me? Or will you come and meet me again? Um, so I want to encourage you guys to rest in the promise that God is there and that we can rest in him. And if you received anything in those, uh, that time of prayer that we had, I would love for you to do it. It's often smart to do what God asks us to do. Um, but I just want to encourage you guys and say, you know, God is behind us and that we can rest in that knowledge that he's chosen us and that he won't leave us. So I will close in prayer and then we'll be done. Father, thank you so much for who you are and for just how much you love us and care for us, Father, that it's more detailed and more deep and more wide than anything we can imagine. Father, thank you that you are an unending source of strength and courage and wisdom. And Father, I pray that you would help us to rest in the knowledge that we were chosen by you and that you love us and that you won't leave us. And Father, I pray that as we each try and go about and leave our known boxes and go into the unknown, Father, that we would remember that it's with your strength and that it's only when we're doing it with you, Father. Thank you because you're always there for us. And I pray that you would remind it to us this whole week. Keep pulling us towards you, Father. Amen.